Okay, I'm back. I've uh, I've taken the uh, the powder from the um, foils, and I've added the powder from a batch of ICs that was in the same lot. So now it's all in now it's all in one beaker. And it's got to be cleaned, and I'm going to refine it again. So. <clears throat> We're going to walk through this thing one more time. Uh, dissolving the powders is almost exactly like dissolving the foils. Uh, but it'll go a whole lot quicker. And this time the solution will be a whole lot cleaner. Um, the first thing I'm going to do. <clears throat> um, since I... Um, used an AR solution to recover the powder the first thing to do is kill any residual acids okay and there's a couple of ways to do this couple of methods one method is to roast it is to dry the powder put it in another container and roast it to a dull red heat that will actually kill all residual acids um, I don't like to, to remove the powder once it's in the container because every time you move gold powder or actually any time you move gold period you leave some behind everywhere you go whether it's in a solution whether it's in a solid whether it's in a powder whether it's in a foil it doesn't matter you always gonna leave some behind <clears throat> once I get it into a powder it never leaves that container I don't filter the powder, I don't put it in a filter, I don't put it in another vessel. The vessel I drop it in is the vessel it stays in until it's ready to dry and melt. So this is the container it's in, this is the container it's going to stay in. Um, the other method for killing the residual acid is to add a base. A lot of people don't like to do this because any uh, chlorides like copper chloride or anything like that will drop out as a hydroxide when you add the base. I use sodium bicarbonate because it's soluble in water. Any leftover uh, sodium carbonate will dissolve in the water rinses. Now I didn't show that. I've already done that process when I added the fil when I added the uh, powders together. Uh, I should have went ahead and and filmed that part but uh, it was raining and I couldn't get the camera out in the rain um, basically all I did was is added a little baking soda until it quit fizzing that's all there is to it okay a couple of water rinses after that takes care of any residual uh, sodium bicarbonate that, that was left in the powder so now there's no acid. This is basically inert. It's neutral. It, that's just dirty water in there. Well, it's actually gold powder and whatever silver chloride maybe or whatever is floating around in there. So the next process is to give it a good boil and muretic acid. And when I say boil, it's going to boil. I want it to boil. And it's going to boil for at least 30 minutes. Silver chloride dissolves very little in strong acids. And it doesn't like to dissolve at all in hydrochloric, but it does a little bit. So there's oxides in here that is going to be removed by the muretic acid. There's probably a small amount of palladium mixed in here. That's going to be removed in this boil. So the powders is going to be nice and clean when I get done with this boil. Once it's done, I'll decant the solution off of it and test it with stannous chloride to make sure that I did not dissolve any gold. Then I'll re-dissolve the powder and I'll drop the gold again. And this time when it comes down, instead of this really dark looking powder, it's going to be a nice tan yellow color. And uh, we'll see the difference in that when I get it uh, washed, dissolved, and, and dropped again. So uh, 
go ahead and put our safety gear on. Put our handy little latex gloves on. I'm usually pretty good about not spilling chemicals. But when you're when you're adding from a jug such as this, splashes may occur. Even though hydrochloric is one of the tamer acids when it comes to your skin, it can still cause a nasty burn if you don't realize that you've gotten it on you. Now, muriatic acid, hydrochloric acid, fumes in ambient temperatures. When it's warm outside, you won't see the fumes coming off. Trust me, they're there. Now we're going to cover it. Wait for it to come to a boil. I'm going to let it boil for about 30 minutes. And uh, I'll be back. Okay, we're back with the wash. And it's uh, it's been boiling now for about 30, 40 minutes. Um, it's time to cut the heat off and uh, let it cool down I'll come back we'll test the solution make sure that we haven't dissolved any gold and uh, we'll take a look at the solution we'll take a look at the powder see if it's cleaned up any then I'll get ready to do the second dissolution on it and uh, we'll see how that goes so we're back with the foils They've cooled off. It's looking a little bit cleaner. Because of the color of the solution, we're going to test it. We need to find out if we've dissolved any gold. That red tint to it shows that we did dissolve a little bit of palladium in it, but we didn't dissolve any gold. Okay, and that's what the wash is meant to do. It's meant to remove as much of the non-target metals as we can. Okay, we're wanting to remove the palladium the silver, the, the oxides, all the rest of the stuff. So now we know that we haven't dissolved any gold in this solution. 
So now I can decant. I can decant the solution into another vessel, and then we'll go ahead and re-dissolve the powders and refine it a second time. Okay. So I've decanted the solution here. We've got our powder. This white is some water I put in there. That's silver chloride. We're going to get that out on the second refine. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a, approximately 100 mils of hydrochloric acid. So I got the Well, we're dissolving the powders. You see that nice orange color? We're making our additions just like we were dissolving the foils small additions and weight. You want to go really slow with this so that it doesn't boil over. You want to wait for the reaction to slow down and basically stop before you add more. You don't want to add too much to the reaction. That way you just have to kill the nitric later. So now you can tell that the reaction has basically stopped. That's just a thermal boil going on in there now. Okay, I'll get this finished dissolved. I'll finish dissolving this. And I'll be back when I get it dissolved. And we'll take a look at the solution then. 
Okay, um, I'm losing my light pretty quickly. Uh, it took a little bit longer than I thought to get this done because I'm working on some other stuff while I'm doing this. I've got other things going on. But the, the solution has cooled. And this is what the solution looks like now. And all this solid material in the bottom, that's not gold. That's solid oxides or solid chlorides or whatever else is solid in the solution that wouldn't dissolve in AR. You know, it's got to be some very non-reactive stuff if it doesn't dissolve in aqua regia. I used approximately 20 milliliters of nitric in the dissolution. And two, I had it covered. So when you cover the reaction, such as a watch glass, or in this case, small dish, it refluxes some of the nitric back into the solution. As the uh, nitrogen dioxide is formed and comes off the solution, the glass or this dish is cooler than the steam coming off and it condenses nitric acid on the bottom of the dish and it drips back into solution. So even though even though I've only added 20 mils to it, it could possibly be more nitric in solution than um, than it took to dissolve the gold. Because you're you're looking at how much does it take to dissolve the gold without a reflux period? And then when you are refluxing back into the solution, you're just returning nitric acid back into the process. So there may be actually more nitric acid in there than I intended. So I'm going to let this settle. I'm going to decant. Let me grab a filter.